Hello all. Um, it's, well, summer sale on Steam. And uh, looking through the summer sale list, I saw this, The Council. Which, I'll be frankly honest, I haven't heard of it before, but it had... Well, it had decent reviews, and it was a nice 60% off the normal price, so it got me interested. Watched a couple videos, uh, found one by Co Carnage, who's a YouTuber I, I respect, who uh, his opinions, we, we, we tend to like the same games, I think, and he's a pretty uh, mellow dude who's... Yeah, he he doesn't bash games too badly, but he he doesn't hype them up either, and he said a lot of good things about the council, and so that got me even more interested. So here I am with the council. Uh, it's I guess it's a Telltale esque type game, kind of a story game, but with more gameplay mechanics than most story games have. Um, I'm, and I'm really excited. I like story-esque games. I really do. And everything I've, I've, I've uh, seen so far on the internet about the council screams that this is probably a game right up my alley. Um, so here we go. This is the first time I'm going to enter the manor. Voice down, of course. Um, subtitles on. Yeah, I'll leave them on. Paris, France, December 10th, 1792. Mm. Stop! Ouch. You're not getting anywhere with this Von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. <laughs> That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair on my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling at one of Lord Mortimer's parties, all right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. So that was a code. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. 
always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened our shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard! Von Borchard! Hmm? Listen! Let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Please, be my guest, Mother. Mm. Uh. Done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt. We're just gonna leave him laying there? Island off the coast of England. Bogus Home Interactive and Cyanide presents. A game by Big Bad Wolf Studio. Well done, Mother. You just had to pick up Von Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Holm. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Holm, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you, good sir, what brings you here? Your Eminence, with all due respect, I prefer to keep my reasons for coming here to myself. I promise it has nothing to do with the legendary party that you all appear to be preparing for. I believe what you will, my son. However, everything is related to the legendary parties organized by our host. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that, Cardinal. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man. Because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, 
I imagine this must be your first time here. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here. Am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right. This is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A Cardinal? A Duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. <clears throat> are you all right? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah, no one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother, no, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you... if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But... I trusted you. No, Sarah! Don't! No! No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay for it. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's yeah. going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't Why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since?
Well, I've devoted myself to the interests of France to the best of my abilities. A few years ago, I had a brush with some of your fellow countrymen. Counter-revolutionaries, I'd imagine. Exactly. They got away. Thanks to a little diversion I came up with to keep the sans culotte away. Believe me, they came close to adorning the walls of the catacombs of Paris. So that young French diplomat was you? The mercy you showed the agents of the Queen roused the admiration of the court. Few would have let them leave France alive. Duchess, I'm surprised that anyone still remembers. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me. I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please, stop torching me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No. Sorry, I, I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. Opportunities. Your skills allow you to discover hidden details. Select the object that is most suggestive of the situation in order to discover them. Opportunities do not consume effort points. To access the skill required for the situation, you just need to have unlocked it. I'm heading off. Don't get left behind. I'm coming. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily, but you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son, 
I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sir's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But Sir may rest assured we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that Sir's mother may be hiding on the island and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. That handkerchief belongs to me. Please hand it over now. But, sir, I... I'll speak directly to your master about it. It will be a very long conversation. Uh, of course, sir. Please take it. On that note, I must leave you, sir. There is still much to prepare in order to welcome all the guests. It is indeed your handkerchief, mother. You must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? There's something not right about this floorboard. It's different from the rest. Somebody replaced it recently. It looks like it's fixed pretty solidly in place. It's going to be tough to rip it out of here. Shit! It's not coming up. I'll never manage it barehanded. I need something to lever it with. Never 
get it open barehanded. This chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean. And the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. This might just come in handy. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used any. rope. Apparently no one's touched it for a good long time. A lantern. Nothing special. what's hidden inside. Let's look. Probably a Dutchman. This envelope is meant for the Vatican. This name sounds familiar. Prashi, Prashi, Prashi. No. Can't seem to place it. Hôtel de Cluny, Rue de Maturin, Paris. I guarantee this letter is for my mother. The address is a hideout for the Golden Order. If you write anyone over there, you have to watch out in case someone's reading your mail. But who is this Samuel Ritter Dauchois? Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richer. What is your game here, Mother? Secrets, always more secrets. 
You've never talked to anyone using language like this. Something's going on here. Who is this Samuel Ritter? And for crying out loud, who is this Manuel Godoy that you keep bringing up? Think. Godoy, Godoy. Manuel Godoy. Why does the name sound so familiar? Ah, it's coming back to me. Godoy is the head of the Spanish government. He was appointed by King Charles IV, if I'm not mistaken. Rumor has it that he's very close to the queen. Too close. Much too close. But hey, that's none of my business. He has a reputation of being upright and proud. very attached to the aristocracy and close to Louis the 16th. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. That does it. Let's see what's hidden inside. There's a book and also a bag. The Mysterium Cosmographicum. I know that book well. Mother used to read passages from it to me all the time. And judging from what I can see, it's the same one as hers. For crying out loud, what's happened to you, Mother? Look inside the bag. A little food, a few toiletries, a small key, and some kind of black powder. Some fruit, a piece of bacon, and some bread. The fruit's still firm. The bread's a bit stale. From the smell, this food's been here roughly two days. And if it's rationed, there's enough left to last two more days. An iron key completely rusted. You never know. It might be useful. I hope Mother wasn't counting on it. The bottom of the bag is covered in black powder. Shit. Those are definitely my mother's things. I recognize her hairpins. This bag smells of her perfume piece of soap, some oils, and her powder puff. But what does all this mean? Right. 
Just in case, I'll take it all. I'll give it back to Mother when I see her. I'm crying out loud. Why did you hide supplies in the middle of nowhere, Mother? I don't know what's going on here, but you obviously feel like you're in danger. Amber crystals. Hmm, this wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels. Uh-huh. What have we here? It's cannon powder. It's unusable now. I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind, but it's a waste. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. This looks like a pistol case, but it's empty. I don't know if this has anything to do with you, Mother, but if it does, at least now you're armed. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. So, let's go through this. My mother's been hiding pieces of bread between the rotten boards of the wharf in the middle of the night. That's not normal. And if that weren't enough, looks now like she's armed. Meanwhile, she also takes the time to send out letters, reassuring whoever might be interested that she's having a fabulous time here. So odd, so very odd. And that's not even all I've noticed. But maybe I had to move on to the manor now. They'll be waiting for me. At least I hope so.
Latin inscription. And Nessis, me fili quantilia produncia mundus vergatur. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I tend to agree. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sada Derice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, Your Eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certain. Uh, you said you work together. What do you do exactly? Mother passed her passion for art to me. Ancient art. Very ancient. Ah, I didn't know your mother was an art lover. Mainly pre-Christian objects, which are believed to have unique properties. Well, how interesting. Now that you mention it, I can indeed imagine Sarah getting interested in that. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me, and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Uh, I uh, hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, uh, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Don't worry, Your Eminence. Your secret is safe with me. You know my mother's reputation. 
As her son, I will defend the Derishe's word with the same fervor. Ah, I would expect nothing less. Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother would read it? Your Eminence, if there's one thing you can count on, it's the value of a promise made by a Durishe. Respecting our commitments has always been the pillar of our family, and nothing nor nobody will prevent that from happening. Since you know my mother, you should know that a Durishe always keeps their word. You can be sure of that. Thank you, my son. It is most reassuring. You're welcome, especially since I promised you nothing, my friend. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Ricci. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Many clues and items are hidden. Some of them will have an impact on your adventure, so do not hesitate to look for them. What were you talking about if you forgive my indiscretion? Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. If I can help you in any way at all, please don't think it is right. Saturn devouring his son. Good God, how awful. Everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. Crucifixion of St. Peter. He was crucified upside down, out of humility. Surprising for an entrance hall. I've just arrived. It might be bad manners to go upstairs without being invited. Blind Oedipus. Blinded himself. What a tragic destiny. Fall of the Damned by Rubens. 
The man who cannot achieve the salvation of God the Father is offered to fall into the depths of the abyss. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch, a biography of the great men. I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet. It is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? Believe me, she's not that special. His eminence was asking me for my opinion about the style of the main door. I have to admit, this place certainly doesn't lack panache. It's simply stupefying. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richet, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Lord Mortimer asked me to drop everything and come find my mother, who seems to have disappeared during her stay here. Ah. Oh. I took the first boat, and here I am. I'm so sorry. Don't be, sir. It's not your fault. Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good Lord, Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friends. Holy shit, that's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. 
For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. Let's see what Washington has to say. Sir, if you don't mind, I shall stay here. Do exactly as you please, young man. Louis, thank you for staying. Just like you, when I arrived this morning, I found out that Sarah had gone missing. I know your mother well. Don't worry. Emily is from the English branch of the Golden Order. And President Washington is in fact the leader of the Order in the United States. I, I didn't know. Sorry to have made you wait, but I didn't want to speak in front of the others. You did well. Secrecy and discretion are the pillars of our organization. If I can help in any way at all, please don't hesitate to ask, my lad. And if you have any other questions, now's the time. And you, Emily, what do you think of my mother? I only know her through the Order. The one time we met, we only exchanged a few words in a corridor of Parliament. And was the exchange courteous or impassioned? I'm not sure if I understand. Was there any reason for her to be angry with you? Under other circumstances, I would slap your face for even asking. But I'll put your lack of tag down to her disappearance. Know that your mother is a woman I would love to work with. Her reputation is entirely deserved. Mr. Washington will be able to tell you more. Mr. Washington, you seem to be very familiar with my mother. Where did you first meet her? I met Sarah during the War of Independence on American soil. She was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, and I must say that her sound advice prevented me from making some terrible mistakes. She may not be a soldier, but believe me, she deserves a statue as much as Lafayette does. <sighs> well, I didn't see that one coming. There's no doubt Mother has many secrets that are still hidden. Right. Would it be too much if I asked you a few more questions? Not at all. Go ahead. But I can't promise I'll remember everything. May I ask, when you saw each other, what did you talk about? When she came to the U.S., did you exchange ideas about the Golden Order? Exactly. What's more, she was essential in helping set up the American branch of the Order. I would never have become its leader without her help. We are a new country. And to achieve our democratic ideals, we need to count on discreet powers such as our organization. Thank you, sir. I was hoping to speak with Lord Mortimer. At least now I have some information, thanks to you. I repeat, Lord Mortimer is a man of his word. You won't be disappointed. And I am persuaded that your mother's research is his main concern. Mother still is at the head of the Golden Order. I find it difficult to believe that she came to this island without notifying the other members. As for myself, I did not know. I am here at the request of Sir Holm, a situation regarding the Crown of England to resolve, and to see what Lord Mortimer has to propose to us. As for me, Lord Mortimer asked me here to speak about the future of America. I did not know that your mother would even be among us. In any case, no one has yet mentioned associating the Order. We haven't found many clues yet.
Don't worry, Louis. I'm sure nothing bad has happened to her. Yes, I, I hope not. Careful, they're coming back. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. Sir Hall, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your rooms. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? The end of the corridor, he said. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. cash.
without a name card. A Byzant from the Byzantine Empire, a coin often used during the St. Louis era. Monsieur Johann von Wollner. I was kind of expecting this to be one big square block, but so far I think I'm still finding new stuff.
few leaves out of an old encyclopedia. Be a crimp to send a long page of the manuscript in order to read it. Well, are these a crimp? Sur Jacques Perru. Monsieur Napoléon Bonaparte. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. I think I'm back where I started. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Biagi's trust. What should I do? Damn. Can't wait to open it, but I gave my word to Piaggi, so... Too bad. I'll wait until I hand it to Mother. Wow! Nice room. Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway.
Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Bazant. Okay, game says it's time for bed. Success, I went to the manor, I refused to get him under his da da Failed something, alternate pass. I could have joined Sir Holmes in the small salon, I could have made an unexpected counter. Um, didn't talk. Strange book and quiet. I asked questions about the mother. Oh, maybe this. Oh, nothing. I didn't fail anything. That's what that means.
right, that's interesting. Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of Durache's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. Interesting. Nighttime stroll, Mr. President? There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. I'm coming. Where's the door? Excuse me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? No. What's her name again? Elizabeth Adams. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. 
Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. According to Washington, Lady Adams is in the small salon. I'd better hurry. Louis, you're straying from your objective. My son, oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe that Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug, a Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary Government. You should do something, my son. Shit. I was supposed to make sure Adams wouldn't go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. Thank you, my son. May God watch over you. Who do you think you are? Forget Me, sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. <sighs> hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business. I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am. Stop. I beg you. I, I didn't mean to. Don't hit me, please, sir. <sighs> Shit. <sighs> if I step in, Adams might just run back uh -uh. to her room. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna huh? suffer. Damn it, what should I do? <gasps> Let her go! Huh? Stay out of it, boy! Shit. <laughs> what are you playing at? I told you to mind your own business, boy. If you think you can side with this whore and then just walk away, you're out of your mind. Give me one good reason not to knock you down. Sir, you obviously do not know who I am, or you'd keep your distance. Ooh, one more like that and I'm gonna get scared. Don't think you're getting away with it that easily. I'm sick of all these toffs. If we were in Paris, I'd send you all to the guillotine. And on top of it all, a woman telling me how I ought to behave? I won't stand for it. Oh, okay, okay, wait a minute. What? Don't tell me you're gonna defend these harlots. I believe in man. From speech comes dialogue. From dialogue, peace is born. And from peace, great destinies flourish. What the fuck are you talking about? I get the feeling you're trying to put one over on me. If that's the case, you're making a big mistake. Sorry about that. Look, there's no point in us aggravating each other. Let's both just go our separate ways. Don't move. We're not done yet. You wanted to be the knight in shining armor and save the damsel in distress. Let's see how brave you are.
Listen, we barely know each other, and it seems everything went a bit too far. Let me apologize if I offended you in any way. What's wrong? Someone cut your balls off? Listen, we barely know each other, and it seems everything went a bit too far. Let me apologize if I offended you in any way. What's wrong? Someone cut your balls off? You should have kept your big nose out! Bastard caught me dead to rights. Liam, you have failed me. I don't know what you were doing, but Elizabeth returned much too soon. Any earlier, and I would have been caught. I didn't get time to search through everything, but I did manage to find what I was looking for. The young lady really is John Adams' daughter. Signed, George Washington. Well done, Louis. The President of the United States asks for your assistance and you screw it up? Mother finds out I... I get the feeling I'll never hear the end of it. Not for a few years, anyway. Now, what was I going to do last night? Ah, yes. Search the room. According to what I saw in my vision, this room was Mother's before I got it. Maybe she left something behind that will help me find her. Nothing. The torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. A cash. Inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. I haven't even had time to unpack my cases.
Dear Monsieur de Richet, please excuse me, but I am unable to join you at present. However, rest assured that we are doing all we can to resolve the case that concerns us. By the way, enclosed, you will find a key that will enable you to retrieve the personal effects your mother left behind. Yours faithfully, Lord William Mortimer. Last judgment. Why do I always get the most terrifying room? Writing material. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio representing St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. The conversion of St. Paul by Caravaggio. It's incredible. It doesn't look like a copy, but I was sure the original was in Rome. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. There's a circle around the lock here. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richer to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Case is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Oh, I'm not far from solving the puzzle. I must keep searching. Look, markings on the floor. Eh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Well, that's what it looks like. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. 
Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly. Robe, crosses, must be Piaggi's room. A priest's robe, crosses, must be Piaggi's room. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet you use a limit to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? making a serious mess here. It's no good. It might have worked if the writing had left marks in the paper, but no, there's only traces of lemon. Luckily, I've only put ash on part of the message. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. Ah, secret writing. Many people use this method for their secret correspondences. Light the flame and the ink appears. reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition or mother's gonna kill me. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, 
I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. Nothing here. I wouldn't mind a nice, strong coffee, though. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. That's the door to Elizabeth's room. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes, why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Excuse me, but speaking frankly, why would you care? I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you. Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No, I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh, she's getting more and more agitated. Look. I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right. I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already. I... I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. 
Sure, he tried everything to keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. Don't you have a brother? I have three, but not one of them has bothered to help me. Charles and Thomas were kept away from me to make sure I wouldn't upset them. As for John, the only time he visited me was to make me swear to never publicly compromise his career. Sorry, I... I didn't know. You're an only son, right? Does it show? If you had a brother or sister, you'd know the way blood ties are unbreakable. Except in my family, unfortunately. I've got nothing more to say to you. Figure it out yourself. Well, this isn't going very well for me. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir, and I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend sir a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Indeed, this masterpiece must not become more damaged. Let me have it, and I'll take care of it personally. I love antiquarian books. It bothers me somewhat. It isn't Sir's job to take care of it, really. No, but I would love to. You'll be doing me a favor by letting me have it. In that case, sir, I shall leave it in your care with pleasure. May I do anything else for Sir? My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone.
What do you want? Mm. I'd rather keep all my teeth. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Uh, certainly not, but what do you Pardon? Please, feel as though. Huh. Oh. Peru looks totally out of place here. He's oh. counting the ten Don't sets of cutlery around there. each plate? The man is completely oh. lost. No. Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. It is served yeah. every day at the king's <laughs> table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Yes, I heard oh. you. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself. Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the houses of Parliament. <laughs> oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. Thank you, Jimmy A Prussian Britannic coalition is not good for France. The last time we fought against them, our empire went up in smoke. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, <laughs> Sir Gregory. Such complexity, typically French. A Soudan, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, oh, this is not Lord Mortimer's <laughs> favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, oh, I have taken the liberty of making ah. a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Don't worry, I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Mm -hmm. My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur... Louis Maurras de Richet. De Richet? De Richet? A name with a nobiliary particle. Mm. <laughs> Are you uh, descended from a noble line? That's right. The seer can do wonders. <laughs> Show us your I am just a simple French citizen. Oh, please, go ahead. Really? Oh, you seem nothing like a commoner. <laughs> Especially please, compared to that wretch over there sharing our meal. <laughs> Have you any information on this Napoleon? Who does not know of her, sir? He's just a soldier, not even a high-ranking one at that. I'll bet he's just here for some minor business. I wouldn't be so categorical. No one is ever invited here just by chance. You'll see. Yes, I 
heard the news. What a storm. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? <laughs> Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'Or for 200 cannons. <laughs> I've only just taken over the affair. The agreement will be considered null and void until we've gone through it together. Is that clear? All right, you seem to know what you're doing. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? It's time for Girondin and Montagne. Yeah, to come together at last and give rise to a republic worthy of all the spilled blood. Both parties must put an end to their petty quarrels for the good of all. You must be joking, my friend. Neither side will ever accept the advice of the other. It's simply a lost cause. <laughs> Let the people make their own choices. You are joking, I hope. The people are simply not capable of taking charge, don't you see? They are an uneducated mob who react on the spur of the moment, incapable of providing a coherent vision for the good of the country. <laughs> I think there must be a misunderstanding. What do you mean? I cannot believe that Lord Mortimer advised me to speak to you. I must have misunderstood. Excuse me, please. <sighs> Bravo, Louis. Total fiasco. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. 
Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Alright, so I seem to be failing at this game pretty badly. didn't level up. Alright, let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Volner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that Your Eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing. Your minutes, but I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. Well, I, I must admit, Your Eminence, indeed it does worry me. I understand, Louis, but continue to have faith in Sarah. You'll see, I'm sure, that in a few days, we'll all be laughing together. That's all I hope for, Your Eminence. But while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Well, go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? As I haven't visited all the manor yet, I wondered if you hadn't seen a Medusa by any chance. I beg your pardon? Yes, La, la Gorgogne, the Medusa from Greek mythology. Would you have seen one in any shape or form? Uh, not at all, my son. I'm not sure what you're getting at, but unfortunately, I, I'm not going to be of any use to you. Thank you anyway, Your Eminence. I won't take up any more of your time. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son.
dining on ham. Well, that's very appetizing. The lock is surrounded by a triple circle. Seriously. few pages out of an old encyclopedia. Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what it'd be worth today. size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? A meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe V. I wonder why Mortimer is particularly fond of this painting. Golden elixir. Hmm. 
Oh, it keeps the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword? Hmm. A hero with a lantern, and the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Origin of myths, a reinterpretation of legendary creatures. Just what I need. The text is in French on the left hand page and in Latin on the right hand. Let's find the chapter on the Medusa. There's an extra line in the Latin translation. The night light was reflected in the shield and blinded the monster. So the hero with the sword seized the opportunity and cut off its head. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the Gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. Looks right, but nothing's happening. Maybe, in this position, the hero with the shield is just dazzling his colleague. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. 
There must be something else. Painting with no name. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. There must be something else. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. There must be something else. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the Chimera, the Hydra, the Gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the Gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. There's an extra line in the Latin translation. The night light was reflected in the shield and blinded the monster. So the hero with the sword sees the opportunity and cut off its head. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. There must be something else. Painting with no name.
Celia. That name means nothing to me.
there's an extra line in the Latin translation. The night light was reflected in the shield and blinded the monster. So the hero with the sword seized the opportunity and cut off its head. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. There must be something else. So I get that, that uh, message when these statues are in this configuration, which is it's making me think these statues are in their correct, their correct formation. There's evidently something completely different to trigger whatever is supposed to get triggered. A Chinese coin, recognizable by the hole in the middle, a meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe V. I wonder why Mortimer's particularly fond of this Amber. The Song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia. Celia. That name means nothing to me. Fragment of Amber. A meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe V. I wonder why Mortimer is particularly fond of this painting. Liberty or Death by Regnault. Well, I'll take liberty, please. But well, I do understand his choice, even though it seems radical.
painting with no name. Atreus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Atreus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. is surrounded by a triple circle. Dining on ham. Well, that's very appetizing. say turning Ulysses' companions back into humans. Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. Circe preparing wine. What better trap for Ulysses? Romney painted Lady Hamilton as Circe.
The only person sizing me up here is that monumental Zeus. I can't be here. Hey, these look like pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia. There's a pattern with five circles on this chest. Chronicles of the Amber Princes. As I recall, Dorkin was my favorite character. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, sir. That is where sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable Sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that Sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, Sir? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, Sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. 
But, sir, may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Yeah, except for my mother. Has sir another question? What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help, sir, in any other way? I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what it'd be worth today.
of Byzant. Painting with no name. I feel like I'm stuck. There's a light hanging over Medusa, there's a light hanging over that statue, there's a light hanging over that one, but there's no light hanging here. Does that mean something? Or am I just reaching for things at this point?
If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. There must be something else. I'm gonna ask the internet. I thought I tried this, but according to the internet, I must have not tried this.
For Pete's sake, Emily. You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business, then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. Oh, yeah? So tell me what you're doing here. I'm just... I mean, I... Yeah, just like me. Probably, but I asked the question first. Well, then, we'll pretend you haven't asked me yet. What about a little gallantry, Louis? Come on, I'm listening. What are you doing here? Since you insist, Duchess, gallantry obliges this. Ladies first. You just won't give in, will you? I'm sorry, madam. It isn't in my nature. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah. In your dreams. At your service, madam. Golden Fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. Do you think that can really be Jason's Golden Fleece? No. You are aware that Jason and the Argonauts is a myth, aren't you? But Mortimer's been protecting this hide. It must be of great value, don't you think? Certainly of historical value. This kind of hide is still used by gold diggers in Eastern Europe. Now you see how easy it is to obtain a legend. Why do you have to act so nonchalant every time I show you something? Louis, anyone can kill a sheep, rip off its hide, and say it's the Golden Fleece. We're at Lord Mortimer's, not at some farmyard fair. You're just too skeptical. And you have a tendency to believe anything. Talk about an unlikely pair. Yet, you know opposites attract, don't you? An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. How did the English manage to get their hands on them? When someone wants to attract the attention of the world's leading power, somehow the gifts just pour in. You wouldn't have gone to the Vatican recently, would you? Are you calling me a thief? Certainly not. Never entered my mind. Chinese coin. Nothing, Erwin. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. Do you know why laurel wreaths are used and not, say, mistletoe or another plant? The laurel wreath symbolized glory in Roman times. In your opinion, what kind would suit me best? Mm, a crown of nettles. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. I think this is Excalibur, King Arthur's sword. I've always dreamt of drawing it from the stone. How sweet, you're still clinging to your boyhood dreams. When you finished playing, maybe you can help me search the place? Well, 
looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes written by Mortimer himself. Amber. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine, hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia, properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? Maybe Mortimer is immortal or capable of living for a very long time like Methuselah. A first smile. Careful. Keep that up and soon you'll end up laughing. Carry on sprouting inanities like that and indeed I might. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer and... I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. Hey, Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? At least this way, things are clear. How do you expect me to open up to you at all if you can't even reassure me? Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? You think your scathing wit protects you, but in fact, it makes you blind. No sooner have people introduced themselves than you already see them in a bad light. You play the part of a strong woman, and yes, you are a strong woman, of course, but what I see is a sensitive young lady who lacks self-confidence. Stop adopting a defensive posture, and you'll see just how quickly new doors will open. There is some truth to what you say. 
I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Well, one thing is very clear. You're working for someone. You're the dark hand of someone more powerful. Home, for example. You seem to know each other very well. Why are we bringing home to the conversation? If you knew me better, you would know that I take orders from no one. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me, but I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? No, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... Your husband, of course. My husband? He can't even walk without a cane. Poor old man. Let him live out the rest of his days in peace. How nice for him. Chances are, you're working with a member of the Order. The only members of the Order, other than ourselves, are your mother and Mr. Washington. The former has sadly gone missing. As for the latter, I knew nothing of his arrival. Incidentally, you must have noticed how inefficiently our order communicates internationally. Right, time is short. You haven't convinced me. I prefer to remain discreet. Don't take it the wrong way. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. And if I reacted so strongly at the sight of the cameo pendant, it's because I thought it belonged to her. But it doesn't. I understand. I won't insist. It's time to leave. Well, I'm horrible at this game. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. She's been drinking too much again. Louie, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louie, we need to talk now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but... If I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. All right. What have you got on your mind now? You've got to listen to what I have to say while there's still time. You need to know the truth about your mother. About my mother? What do you mean? I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognized my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis. I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you it was her. Did you talk to each other? 
No, she was far away. I I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes. I need something to calm me down. No thanks, I, I'd better not. Listen, if you want me to tell you everything, you have to drink with me, Louis. What I have to say to you is of the utmost importance. No, I won't drink. All right, Louis, then get the hell out of here. You're incapable of opening your eyes, so be it. Get out! Why the hell did I go with Elizabeth? I could have spent the night with Emily, but no. I had to go play the night with a big heart. Oh, well, never mind. Tomorrow's another day. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. What the hell's going on? You are in deep trouble, my young friend. Hmm. Being arrested, huh? Oh, that's the end? Okay, so... Confused.
maybe that was the end. How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs. And Jacques Perrou, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. Last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. But an act of horrific violence occurred during the night, and I do not know if this is linked to the disappearance of Sarah. If there's a possible link to my mother, I, I hope you'll let me know. In the early hours of the morning, Elizabeth Adams was found dead in her room, savagely mutilated with a knife. I'll get straight to the point, Louis. According to the initial elements at my disposal, you were the last person to see her alive. Yes, last night we... Uh... Do you suspect me? I want you to tell me everything that happened last night, and leave nothing out. Tell me, how did the evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came up to us. She was in a state of panic and assisted that she needed to speak to me. She said she feared for her life. I took my leave of the Duchess and followed Elizabeth to her room. Mm -hmm. Continue. She insisted we have a drink, without which she refused to confide anything. What exactly did she want to speak about? She claimed she saw my mother the previous evening on the cliff, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I will send someone as soon as possible. But do go on. I refused to go on drinking with her. She already seemed drunk and her conversation became confused. So then she ordered me to get out. If only I'd stayed. Don't blame yourself, Huey. How could you have known? But thank you for this new information. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this, and I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? 
Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And, Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. So, I went from being arrested to investigating the murder. I was supposed to be able to search the guest quarters. Good day, Monsieur de Richet. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No, no, I... Uh, nothing special. I'd have thought this is not really the shortest way to get to your suite. Uh, yes, I, I wasn't really looking where I was going. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room. Chest with a half circle pattern. There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts.
ancient Greek. Let's see what it means. These are sacred chants intended to protect their bearer. But from whom? Or from what? I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of... What's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin. Probably during childhood, if the scars are anything to go by. It's the same kind of tattoo as on the rest of her body. I see no sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she... She must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck, and maybe mutilations. She bled from the nose. What a strange smell. Laudanum. Certain courtiers use it to get drunk. If taken in large quantities, it can provoke fits of madness. except that tattooed symbol. Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. Poor girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. blade is short and thin. Well sharpened, apparently. It's covered in blood. Still fresh. The lower part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. Knocked over a bottle of wine.
thing Elizabeth served me last night. Still just as disgusting. I don't know what's happened to this wine, but it's undrinkable. Vials of laudanum. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. Piece of fabric, high quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. It's a travel dress. The silk has been lightly waxed to protect it from bad weather. And I know the very woman who came up with the idea, given all the traveling she does, my mother. God help us. Why did she come here in the first place? The material appears to have undergone abnormal wear and tear. She must have been scouring the countryside, and that doesn't look good. June 11th. 1791. My dear Elizabeth, your last letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer mattered to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last, right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. Don't forget to tell me what present you want. So, there's a big track, which denotes somebody big, and then a slender hand holding the knife. So, I think two people were involved. Pistol? Fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, fairly light. A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded, and well, there's no traces of gunshot residue. I'd conclude that it hasn't been used recently. Right. I shall have to find its owner. Liberators of France, huh? 30 November. 1791. My dear sister, the cancellation of our reunion hit me like a stab to the heart. Father told me it was for your well-being, but I can't help but blame him. He claims that your condition has worsened and that it could be dangerous for both of us if we met. If only I knew where you were, believe me, I'd be at your side. I haven't received any news from you in a long time. Please write. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. I hope you like the enclosed talisman.
August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you. But they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day to be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with Father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. A notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. It looks like a mixture of medieval Latin and Anglo-Norman. It is difficult to make sense of this jerky writing. I can make out some passages, though. He's coming. The demon is upon me. He's coming back to kill me. There she is. Death has come to finish me off. I've just run into her son. That was her last entry. What tortured writing. A novel of the initiation of a young woman into a polite society. The clock stopped at 3.54. If it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you'll be able to put all of this behind you one day. blood spatter indicates that the murder must have held Elizabeth upright during the attack. Even if Elizabeth wasn't very big, I, I doubt she wouldn't have put up a struggle. It takes tremendous strength to overpower someone like that. Has uh, finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir, may I return whenever need be. I shall guard the door.
King George III in coronation robes. Nice touch for the room of an English duchess. Tending children at the orphanage in Harlem. I find it a little hard to understand this painting choice. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should under no circumstances hamper Sir Gregory's plans. Decidedly, they have support from the highest level in Buckingham Palace. So here we both are, hands and feet tied, and little room to maneuver. Keep me abreast of events. Our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. P.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. The Lady's Waldegrave by Reynolds painted upon the request of the Waldegrave family in an effort to find them a husband. Grammar of Port-Royal. Ah, the artistry of the French language and all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world, at least une partie of it. A letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He's the present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Emily has indeed some powerful backers. Madam, thank you for consoling the Queen. The King's situation is worsening, but I wager he'll recover from this present fit. Next time you speak with Her Majesty the Queen, would you please be so kind as to ask her to look into my petition to raise taxes with the King? I will personally see to it that our nation will recover from this impasse. But King George's mental situation is slowing down our decision taking. Thank you in advance for all your help. William Pitt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Two coils circle the lock. Queen Charlotte. All the royal family of England is there from what I can tell. A letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. What can I do for you, Louis? I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well, but I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much.
Elizabeth was stabbed nine times. No doubt she suffered greatly. Nine times? What monster is capable of such a horrible thing? Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth, not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? Since your arrival, did you notice anything strange about Elizabeth? Everything that happened around that poor child was strange. You saw that for yourself. I know. You're right. I'm looking for leads to try to reduce the number of suspects. Well, I would say that in addition to ourselves, you could also cross off President Washington. I went to see him during the night. I had some business with him, and I can confirm that he didn't leave his room all night. Hmm. That gives Washington an alibi. I'm now interviewing all the guests to establish the alibis for each person. Just so that I can cross you off the list of suspects, can you tell me what you were doing on the night of the murder? Am I given to understand that I'm on the list of suspects? Don't take it the wrong way, but I must consider every possibility. Well, if you absolutely wanted to be sure of my activities that evening, you only had to join me, you know. I know, Emily. Especially since I couldn't prevent the murder, even though I spent part of the evening with Elizabeth. You... you're sure it's not too hard to bear for you? The fact is, I don't have a choice. But I will find the murderer. I owe Elizabeth that, at least. I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Gray silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Louia. I... Do you realize what this means? If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any gray silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister since we wear the same clothes. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you. Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. Thank you, Emily. Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? <sighs> I must admit, Louis, I... I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Golden elixir. Dear E, I received your last. Fragment of amber.
The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm, that might come in handy. Hannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my room? And he gets victory after victory? The Battle of Alexander at Issus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. Vercingetorix throws down his arms at the feet of Julius Caesar by Royer, two great army chiefs. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. There's just one holster in Bonaparte's gear, and the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in him. French actor Talma is Nero and Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. A fragment of amber. It's a beautiful weapon, a Levy Damask Blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Powelli continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. A bicorn decorated with a cockade it must belong to a French soldier. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, 
and his eminence Piaget as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, couldn't think straight. So I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. Not really, no. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Oh, well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. What do you want from me, Deriche? Greetings. It's fallen to me Cut that... the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. Four circles. Records of the police. Notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris. And there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around.
dear friend, please come and join us. We must meet about the ongoing operations in Paris. A boat will be waiting for you in Calais, and will take you to Dover in England. From there, a carriage will take you to the port of Tintagel, where a frigate will be waiting for you and other guests, so you can meet up with me on my island as quickly as possible. I await your arrival. Lord William Mortimer. Massacre of the Innocents, but by Van Harlem. I think that Mortimer likes to play mind games with his guests. A pattern with four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic, Long live France. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Dear Monsieur Peru, I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Nice decor for a revolutionary tribunal judge's room. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. You were armed the night of my arrival. Can I see your weapon? No. You do realize you're not helping, don't you? You're making it worse for yourself. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I know you were at the scene. We will save a lot of time if you just tell me what happened. You know nothing at all. Enlighten me then. For now, I have your footprint in a pool of blood. That's right. The only thing you can prove is one of my boots was at the scene. Congratulations, you've wrapped up the investigation.
Greek drachma, one of the rare ancient coins to be mentioned both in the Bible and in the Quran. The Sorrows of Young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Werner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Volner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. Table of alchemical symbols. Someone circled the zinc symbol. A chest locked with a four letter code. Surely a word close to the owner's heart. The alchemist is a young man. The signs of the zodiac. Amber crystals. The alchemist is an old man.
pound. What can I do for you, Derichet? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, Monsieur? Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed. But I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Werther dedication, signed by your hand, monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Durichet. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will... Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. Please. Tell me a little more about the nature of your relationship. That is a personal matter, monsieur. Yes, that is true. So, tell me. All right. It was passion. That's why we couldn't stay together. It scared her. Did you see how many tattoos Miss Adams had on her? Of course. Who wouldn't have noticed? Yes, but I'm sure that an expert like yourself must have an opinion on the subject. I do. She was seeking to imprison something inside her. Her own body had become a sort of prison. She wanted to protect herself, is that what you're saying? Elizabeth was a flame, a candle in the night. And like all candles in the night, she was surrounded by darkness, by her demons. Call it what you will. One thing is for sure. She struggled against hell and high water not to let her flame go out. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. Chess with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. 
Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of... of Vermont. Looks like a note between Emily and Washington about trade deals. The English and the Americans are preparing a peace treaty. It would appear that Emily is in secret discussion with Washington about reopening trade between the United States and England. If such an arrangement came into being, France would suffer dearly. My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon, your friend. A map of Connecticut. Portrait of George Washington. Greetings, Liam. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. 
Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and, well, who doesn't, Mr. President. Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? I spent the night right here, reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night, you can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, not the migraines. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured, it looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Greetings, Louis. Do you know if she had... Any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry. But that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened. And I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countryman or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. Yes, Lord Mortimer has a talent for healing, apparently. I'm not surprised Sir Gregory advised her to come. Agreed. I shan't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President.
Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. What a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, uh, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. It's uh, probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. But if I were you, my son, I would talk to Monsieur Peru. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. chest.
Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. Were you able to recognize the Prowler? Unfortunately not, no. It was dark, and Lord Mortimer was waiting for me. I was not really paying attention anyway. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all. Except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh, la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual?
I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She isn't missing, you know. What? What, what do you mean? My mother has left traces in every nook and cranny of your island, my lord. She's definitely here. Now, what worries me most is why she doesn't show herself. Mm, that doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. Yet he told me that you had spoken, and that you hadn't been able to reach an understanding. Hmm. That's putting it mildly. Mr. Bonaparte is one of those guys who only understands people who think like he does. Ah, I see what you mean. He is indeed rather inflexible when it comes to certain subjects. But I am still of the opinion that you can manage to get along. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Did my mother intend to finance a war? I'm not sure that I follow. No, your mother's aim was not so much to partake in a war, but rather to make Monsieur Bonaparte accountable. France is in turmoil, and having the support of a military man can often come in handy, Louis. You'll see. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? She... she was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris. We were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. Uh, what was the name of your dealer? The dealer was called Von Burchard. As for the buyer, he was unknown to us. Hmm. No, I don't know anything about that. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Maybe she found something out. What do you mean? 
My mother has a gift for investigating. If she had picked up a lead, nothing would have stopped her. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jesse, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. The armistice between the Russians and the Turks. Russia's come out of it having officially won Crimea, which gives it direct access to the Black Sea. And, at the same time, the Mediterranean Sea. I'm worried about the decisions Tsarina Catherine might decide to take. She's a woman who managed to get rid of her husband to accede to the upper reaches of power. Gaining access to the Mediterranean Sea remains her main objective. When she still had that dear Potemkin as her lover, I could always find out about her intentions, but those days are over. You're speaking of Grigory Alexandrovich Potemkin? The very man. The little devil behind the mother of all Russians. Since his death, I know absolutely nothing of what the Tsarina is up to. Oh, really? Ah, yes. I didn't mean to shock you. Uh, please forgive me. Let's just say that, in my position, it is often advantageous to know about the habits and customs of world leaders. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. <laughs> Are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the Third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the siege of Saint-Jean d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma. Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. Emily has a twin sister? Who knew my mother? What's she playing at, goddammit? That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me. But between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came, when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study.
there are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. What is this disc? St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised, and receives the light from his savior. appears to be locked on the other side. I think I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like, like a key falling to the floor. Well, we'll see if it works. It's open. A chest with the occult symbol representing air. The drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. The New Testament. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. It looks like someone touched this commode recently. There are fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. Painting of St. Mark, 
from the collection of the apostles by Guido Rini. A lot of paintings by the same person. Amber. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Of the four apostles shown in this piece, Paul is the only one who isn't an evangelist. He is the 13th apostle. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? chest with the occult symbol representing air. Volume of the Gutenberg Bible. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? A cash. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. St. Paul on the Road to Damascus by Caravaggio. St. Paul is the only saint to be presented twice in these paintings, contrary to the other apostles. How come?
Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. can't leave, so I guess I'm stuck in. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange. There's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know what does that mean? Byzant from the Byzantine Empire, a coin often used during the St. Louis era. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. But wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust has built up on it. 
Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. There's nothing worth noticing here. No, nothing of value here. It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. It says, Count in the dust. All right, let's do it. Painting of St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Reni. There are finger marks deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. That's what the message in Hebrew spoke about. Hebrew eight. Thou hast put all things under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Strange, St. Paul is shown twice, unlike the other disciples. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. There's 
something else behind this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, oh, look, here's a message. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian, he's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today, I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark who will reveal the answer to them. And that first group of pilgrims, how many are there now? If I refer to the chapter I'm reading at the moment, six. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jerus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. There are burnt papers in the chimney. 
There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust is built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. Looks like it's been taken down recently. What was it my mother said? That she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle. Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait! That means it's him. He's the youngest apostle. Right. This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. Volume of the Gutenberg Bible. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Gogotha. I and my father are one. Now, there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches.
Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does Mother mean by that? On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit not be more glorious? Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, for we are as reprobates. Because we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian, he's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today. I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. And that first group of pilgrims, how many are there now? If I refer to the chapter I'm reading at the moment, six.
For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are, of all men, most miserable. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Do all things without murmurings and disputes. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds, and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Here's a message. There are some complications. Indeed, the Prussian is insistent. What's happening at your end? Do you need help? If tonight is not possible, let's see tomorrow evening, in the south room, where we reviewed the situation. When Paul understood that only the axe counted he went back on his tracks. I await your confirmation to his left in the company of the pilgrims that have joined him. Yeah, this last comment is about their code. I should find new pilgrims near Paul. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in the lustful desire, even as the Gentiles who knew not God. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy we found in you before our God? Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Honor thy father and thy mother, as this is the first commandment. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. In him God has chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we may be holy and blameless before him.
and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. I guess I'll just come back later. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust is built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? It's 
too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. No, nothing of value here. There are finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. That's what the message in Hebrew spoke about. Hebrew eight. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. The drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini, he's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. There's something else behind this painting. It says, half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned.
There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. And he became very hungry, and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey. There's a note here, a message from Mother and reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. Allay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? Clearly, she must be trying to do something useful, but the what? The nightmare. Does that remind me of anything? probably has to do with an object or something. Granting that this is the case, where might it be found? thought it would have been over there, but something's telling me that it isn't. I better keep searching. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious. So I've been awake for some time and I feel like my brain is starting to fail me. So I'm going to figure out how to save this up and call it an episode.
It's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. Alright all, so this has been a lengthy first look at uh, The Council, which is a very intriguing game, and I can't wait to wake up so I can play it again. I don't even want to go to sleep, but I am tired, so. Um, sorry about the length of this video, but that's what happens when I really get into a game. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm James Johnson, aka Software Blade. This is my content. Hopefully, you're appreciating it. If so, leave a like and subscribe. And until next time, all, peace.